I'm Elaine, and I'm a tour guide in the French Quarter. I do ghost tours, and I am not going to tell you the stories that I tell on my tour, because you got to pay for those, but if you want to hear some interesting things that have happened to me while I'm leading random drunk people around the French Quarter, I got you. Last night, I made the mistake of telling a friend I had a disaster of a tour, and that's not true. It was a mildly irritating tour, and the universe felt the need to show me the difference. Because tonight was a disaster. Uh, so I had two tours tonight. And uh, for context, it was 97 degrees without heat index when I started the first tour. And keep in mind, my car does not have air conditioning. So I was already overheated before I even started my first tour. And uh, I reach a certain point of the tour and just... Suddenly, I can't see. Um, uh, there's a buzzing in the back of my head. I'm dizzy. I feel like pressure in my sinuses. And I know I'm about to pass out. So I quickly pause. I'm like, let me get some water in me. And one of my guests asks, do you need to sit down? And I was like, no, I'm fine. Never mind. Yes, I do need to sit down. And I just sat on the sidewalk as soon as possible. And meanwhile, it's starting to pour down rain. And I'm like, well, at least this will cool it down. And objectively, I think that's... In the end, what happened, uh, the sudden change in temperature and barometric pressure just basically knocked me out. And I was down for like a minute recovering, and then I was like, no, I'm fine. I can continue the tour. So I got back up and pretended that I was fine and finished the damn tour. Or finished as much of it as I could. It was literally downpouring for the rest of the tour. So like one of the guests, as soon as we walked by the open storefront, she was like, I'm going in there and did not come back out. And the other two like tried to stick it out with me, but they were clearly like drowned rats. And one of the stops in the last half of the tour, there is no cover. There are no balconies or anything. So I was just like, do y'all want me to skip this one? And they sort of nodded. I'm like, okay, we're skipping the one that there's no cover for. And I ended up doing the last stop at a different location than normal, just because I was like, we're not going all the way down to Rampart Street for you to get drenched the entire way. And also, they did not want to go that far down. But then I finished the tour, run back to the storefront, uh, and, like, uh, luckily, I have an unusually long wait before my next tour. I have a full, like, hour before my next tour, so I'm like, good. And I thought I was fine when I got to the store. I was like, oh yeah, no, I've recovered. I'm fine. I go inside. And I sit down, and suddenly I realize I'm in no way fine. I've just been pretending so hard that it seemed like I was fine. And, like, I guzzle water. I go to the back, get more water. And, like, our tarot card reader's offering me food. Be like, do you need some, like, like raw nuts? They're good for you. They've got protein. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And, like, meanwhile, the other tour guides are getting ready to go out at 8. And there's one ridiculous family that comes in and is like, are, is the tour still happening? Are we still going on the tour? And when the tour guide's like, yeah, tours run, ready or shine. She's like, but it's thunderbolts and lightning. And I'm like, yeah, if you don't feel safe, you can reschedule. You can do a rain check. And she's like, but we won't be here tomorrow. And they're like, okay, well, then your choices are go on the tour or not. And she was like, well, will you give us umbrellas? And we're all like, no, you're not going to get free umbrellas just because it happens to be raining. You have the choice of buying ponchos, buying umbrellas, or just getting wet. And uh, she ended up buying ponchos and then being very mad at the price. But they left. Life is good. Waiting. My guests start to arrive. And thank the Lord Jesus, I have a tiny ass tour. It was supposed to be 10 people. Uh, only two were there at 827, but there was one group I would be, was pretty sure they were going to arrive because they booked last minute, and people who book last minute usually do show up. So I went and signed people in, and I was talking to my guests, and they were very sweet girls, and, uh, just because I'm going to use this as a descriptor later, they were German, uh, and... That's just to differentiate them from the other group who are not German. But the other group finally do arrive, and we're like, okay, let's go! And we're getting to Jackson Square, and there's a fight happening on the corner. And I'm like, okay, we're skirting around the fight. And we go around the fight, and we go down and start the story. And I'm like two minutes in when I hear one of my guests go, oh no. And I look over, and someone has tripped and fallen on the ground. And like, this happens a lot especially in Jackson Square, and when they're not my guests, I will admit what I tend to do is I make sure there's somebody around them, somebody who is there helping them, and if there's somebody there helping them, I usually just sort of let it go and let that person deal with it. But this time, the vibes were wrong from moment one. Like, the lady was down and nobody was trying to get her up. And, like, the woman that was with her kept, like, nudging her with her foot. And I'm like, 
Oh no. And like, uh, one of the German girls realizes there's something wrong a split second before I do, and she's like heading over there. I'm like, okay, now I have to go because one of my guests is going. And so we go over there and we're like, hi, can we help? Is there anything we can do to like make this better? Can we get her anything? And the woman who is upright is just angry and is like saying things like, well, it's not my fault she fell. And like is saying things to the woman, like try to get up. And meanwhile, the woman on the ground is like 70 years old and bleeding from the head. And we're like, okay, who's calling an ambulance? And luckily it seems they were with a, another guy who was calling an ambulance and angry lady sent her, uh, the fourth member of their party across to Cafe du Monde to get napkins for some reason. Cause you know, laying in the rain puddles in Bur uh, like in Jackson Square while bleeding from the head, napkins are totally the solution for that. Uh, but we are sort of just with them for the next, like, 15 minutes because none of us feel safe and comfortable leaving angry lady with the lady who's on the ground. And it's clear we can't get the lady on the ground up because every time she tries to move, she's like, no, no, there's something wrong. So we're like, okay, we're just gonna be here. Even if we can't do anything, we're gonna be here and make sure nothing gets worse. And eventually, uh, once the guy got back from calling the ambulance and they were sure that the ambulance was coming, I was like, okay, we're gonna just step aside and finish the story. And we did, and I have no idea what I told those people. And they, I'm pretty sure, were not listening to me either. It was just words to feel the time until the ambulance arrived. And finally, the fire truck and the EMS has arrived, so we're like, okay, does everybody feel safe leaving? And we headed out. And I am, you know, halfway to the next stop when one of my guests is like, excuse me, can we stop? And I'm like, yes, what's going on? What's going on? What, what happened? And she's just like, I'm suddenly feeling really faint. And I'm like, I know the feeling, but uh, what can I do? Do you need water? What do you need? And she's like, I need to get some water. I'm like, okay, we're passing Willie's Chicken Shack. They probably have water in here. And she's like, I'll go in and get some water. I'm like, okay, I'll wait for you. And like, while she's inside, her friend is like, I don't understand what happened. Like, I don't, she was fine. And then suddenly she wasn't. And I'm like, I know what happened. 97 degree temperature, a sudden drop to almost 75, rainstorm and then she saw a lot of blood like that's plenty to make someone pass out and she comes out and everything seems fine and i go into the next story where there's somebody screaming his head off about somebody stealing the joan of Arc course which sure random drunk person and i get to the next stop and i realize in the middle of my story that that stop features a guy taking an axe to the head and i usually go into somewhat like not extreme details, but a little bit of detail about like the blood all over the sidewalk. And maybe I shouldn't do that with a guest who just almost passed out from the side of blood. So last minute, I'm in the middle of a sentence being like, and the guy took an ax to the back. And now we're gonna skip to the rest of the story. And it was just sort of weird and awkward, and I know they noticed, but it was fine. It was fine. Uh, and then we get to the next location, and there's this really weird moment where what looks like a rather upper-class, yuppie kind of woman walks by with a man without shoes and covered in dirt, who I will admit did look homeless, which, you know, good. People should interact with each other. But the girl is just talking full volume while the guy has his hands over his ears saying, no, we need to be quiet. There's a tour. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I'm getting us to the next stop. And as we're crossing the street, a car that was, there was plenty of distance between us and the car for us to cross the street. And yet somehow he sped up so that he almost hit one of my guests. And when I say almost hit, I mean the guy got close enough that my guest slapped the car door as he sped by. And it seems that the guy in the car was mad that my guest slapped his car because he stopped suddenly and was opening his door. And I'm like rushing back to be like, uh, uh, what do I do? What do I do? Don't, don't start a fight. Please don't. And luckily the guy who had slapped the car, his wife was coming up and being like, no, no, it's fine. There's cops here. And sure enough, before I can even get back, there's the flashing lights of the cops coming over to intervene. And I'm like, okay, let's just keep going. And I get us to where the next story, I'm going to tell it. And like, we're good. We're in the middle of the story. And a cockroach runs up one of their legs. And I'm like, can this night please stop? And then finally I'm done with it. And I'm going back to the place where I passed out on the six o'clock tour. And I'm in the middle of that story. And suddenly... I can't see, I'm getting dizzy, I'm feeling shaky, and I'm like, no, 
I refuse to pass out at the same exact spot again. So I just pause for a minute, like, guys, I'm getting some water. And, like, I drink as much water as possible, and then I just fucking tough through it. And there are moments that literally the only thing holding me up was the pole I was leaning against. But I'm like, fuck it, I'm finishing this damn story. The good news is the rest of the night was relatively calm. And by that, I mean the last two stops. So, yeah, never jinx yourself by saying that one night was a disaster. Because then you'll get to see what a real disaster is. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to share your own experiences in the comments below.